16 years ago, a lone bee famously sued the human race for worker exploitation. Okay, I'm sorry. But as hilarious as this masterpiece was, sometimes reality can be stranger than fiction. An animal has never gone to court as the plaintiff yet, although PETA has tried on behalf of a monkey. If we go back to the medieval era of Europe, it wasn't unusual to see such animals tried in court. From pigs to rats, accused of damaging property to the most heinous of crimes, murder, many animals in this epoch of humanity were sentenced to excommunication and for the worst of the beasts, death. Most organisms put on trial were domesticated livestock, but today we'll take a look at the pest that ravaged the agrarian towns of France, the dreaded weevil. This ridiculous story with an even more absurd ending begins 30 years before the actual trial, when a complaint was first made by Vineyards of St. Julien in 1945. A procurator named Pierre Falcone and advocate Claude Morel defended the insects while Pierre Ducol appeared for the plaintiffs. Both parties discussed and deliberated over a year outside of a legitimate trial, and a proclamation was issued by the Doctor of Law on the 8th of May, 1546, to publicly pray. Inasmuch as God, the supreme author of all that exists, ordained that the earth should bring forth fruits and herbs, not solely for the sustenance of rational human beings, but likewise for the preservation and support of insects which fly about on the surface of the soil. Therefore, it would be unbecoming to proceed with rashness and precipitance against the animals now actually accused and indicted. On the contrary, it would be more fitting for us to have recourse to the mercy of heaven and to implore pardon for our sins. And it worked. Wow. The weevils disappeared and peace and prosperity returned to the lands, but unfortunately for just a short-lived 30 years. In 1587, pestilence returned and complaints quickly evolved into a formal trial brought forth by Petroman Bertrand and Francois Aminette against the beetles on the 13th of April on the grounds for excommunication. Be gone, vile man! Be gone from me! But the original procurator and advocate had long passed away, so the first task of the court was to appoint the distinguished Antoine oh. Filiol and Pierre Rembaud on behalf of the defendant weevils. The case officially began on May 30th. Filiol argued with quotations from the book of Genesis that their clients have kept within their legitimate natural rights given to them at birth as lower animals before man. Furthermore, Filial proclaimed it was unreasonable and absurd that these powers of civil law are used against brute beasts that are only subject to natural and instinctual impulses. He concluded with demands to dismiss the plaintiff's petition, but the case was adjourned to the 6th of June, then to the 12th, and then again to the 19th when Petroman Bertrand presented a lengthy replication or rebuttal to the official. The defendant's advocate obviously wanted a copy of it for deliberation, and this once again adjourned the court till the 26th of June, which turned out to be a holiday, so it was given on the 27th. In reply to the defendant's plea, Aminette argued that although these insects were created before man, their purpose for creation was to be subordinate and subservient to mankind. He snarkily concluded his statement that his opponent had nothing to say to this argument, which Antoine merely remarked that he hadn't received the document ordered a week ago on the 19th and it needs to be further considered. Which, of course, postponed the case to the 4th of July. On this day, Filial gives his answer and denies that subordinate lower animals have the right of excommunication and also insists upon his former claim that lower animals are only subject to natural laws. Filial mentions that the opposing counsel hadn't even attempted to disprove this. The next time they meet again is on the 18th of July. The procurator of the weevils demands the case to be closed, but the prosecuting attorney applies for a new term wishing for the case to be pending as long as possible, and it was granted. So the trial has been going on for a couple of months now, and the weevils are still ravaging the town's grapevines. So while officials are clashing in court, a public meeting was called on the 29th of June by none other than Francois Aminette to decide where they should banish the beetles. The town chose a piece of land called Le Grand Face and drew up a conveyance for Antoine to agree to. 
This was officially presented in court on July 24th, to which Bertrand specifically called out how generous of an offer it was to relocate the Beatles. But Antoine realized that this is basically just excommunication word nicely. He requested a copy of the conveyance and time for deliberation, which both were granted, and the case was adjourned to the 20th of August. That day comes around and it turns out the Duke of Savoy was preparing an invasion against the Marquisate of Saluzzo. The influx of troops in the area interfered with the trial and it was once again postponed to September 3rd when Antoine declared that he wasn't accepting the offer of relocation on the grounds that the selected place was sterile and not sufficiently suitable for supporting the Weevils. Teacher Man snaps back and reaffirms that the spot is perfect for the Beatles with all of its shrubbery abundance. An official then appointed experts to examine the area before his final decision on the matter. Despite such careful deliberation and a long documented battle on the rights of a weevil, in 1587, the final decision on the last page of records seems to have been destroyed by none other than insects. And this is what the author had to say about this. Perhaps the prosecuted weevils, not being satisfied with the results of the trial, sent a sharp-toothed delegation into the archives to obliterate and annul the judgment of the court. Although we're unsure about the outcome of this stretched trial, we know that these notorious hardened criminals were excommunicated or killed in several other cases. Weevils also ruined the crops of Dijon in 1460, Beaujou in 1488, and Troy in 1516. And there was even a case in Bern 1487, when these beetles were invited to appear before the bishop, explaining why they ate the crops. Unfortunately, the Beatles didn't really get the memo and didn't show up to the summon. Due to legal complications like the previous case, it was delayed until the Beatles did so much damage, the court just banned the Beatles outright. The people rejoiced, and the Beatles didn't care because nothing came of it. It was then reasoned that it was the fault of the people for sinning, and God allowed these Beatles to continue ravaging their crops as punishment. After some more back and forth deliberation, a local priest cursed the Beatles on the argument that these weren't God's creatures because they weren't on Noah's Ark. Whether this curse involved killing the Beatles or somehow excommunicating them, it's unsure. Now, I know this document says the cockshafer larvae, but I believe this might have been inaccurate. In other sources, the beetle in question was called Inger, excuse my pronunciation, in Switzerland, and they're described as a type of weevil or seed beetle. If anyone's from Switzerland and knows about this incredibly niche beetle, please let me know in the comments down below. I can't fault this possible inaccuracy because another famous offender was in fact the Cock Schaefer. These furry critters have been a source of immense pain to farmers of Avignon in 1320, but unlike the bean weevils of Saint Julien, the great hammer of justice was a swift one. These beetles were brought to court and sentenced to leave within three days of the plot else they would be outlawed. Of course, they didn't leave and they were immediately collected and killed, at least according to Wikipedia. This source doesn't explicitly mention it, but to be fair, I did translate it from German to English, so maybe something was missing, but I doubt it. I only focused on the beetles that were tried in court, but the history of insect trials also involve all other kinds of bugs, such as caterpillars, locusts, and flies. So if you're interested, I highly recommend checking out this book as it's the holy grail of this topic. I focus mostly on biological sciences of beetles such as biomechanical beetle strength or biorobotics, but their legal history is something so ridiculous that I had to make a video about it. So if you want to learn about the other insects in court, let me know in the comments below and also what you thought of this hijinks of world history. Until my next video and who knows how long, I'm so sorry. Have a great rest of your day.